Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and today I am going to be drawing my April TBR. So if this is your first TBR video with me, how this normally works is that each month I draw three books. I draw them out of my TBR star jars. I have three jars here. They are filled with little origami stars that I have folded up out of paper. Each of these stars is folded up out of a strip of paper that has the title of a book that I'm interested in reading on it. This is my general all-purpose TBR star jar. It has all of the books on my TBR list. If you're interested in finding out the titles of all of the books in this jar, you can follow the link in the video description box down below to my uh, one to read list on Goodreads. It has all of those listed on there if you're curious, so feel free to head over there and check those out. Next is my series continuation jar. These are uh, the next book in various series that I'm in the middle of. I'm not a huge series continuation person, but these have really like captured my interest, so I will be drawing a star out of this jar. And then finally, we have my golden star jar. These are my most anticipated reads. I want to get to them sooner rather than later so I don't lose interest. Uh, so I will be drawing one book out of this jar. Before I draw my April TBR, I want to very quickly run through all of the books that I read in February. Just a quick little wrap up, so uh, let's do that first and then we'll jump into drawing books. All right, the first book that I completed in February was Monsters of Men. This is the final book in the Chaos Walking series by Patrick Ness. This is a kind of a soft sci-fi series that has sort of a dystopian feel to it. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it four and a half stars. This was a uh, very high action, a lot of fun, and I would absolutely recommend this series to anyone who enjoys like soft sci-fi dystopian books. Next we have Any Sign of Life by Ray Carson. This is a young adult, kind of like a post-pandemic uh, dystopian story. I really, really enjoyed this book. I have been looking forward to reading it for a really long time and it absolutely did not let me down. I ended up giving this book four stars. If you are a fan of dystopian young adult, like standalones, you should definitely pick this up. This was a lot of fun. Next, I completed Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. Uh, this was sort of a mind-bending, like, literary novel, I guess, or novella, really. This is a very, very short little story. This was okay. Uh, this, I think my expectations might have been a little bit too high. A lot of people talk about this book being very, like, sort of unsettling, disturbing, kind of horror-ish. It just wasn't for me. That's just a matter of perspective. You might feel that way about this book, but for me, it was really just okay. Next, Next, I completed Sleepwalking Volume 3 in the Nightmare Land Chronicles series. I absolutely adore this series. This is a horror series set in a world where the sun has vanished and everyone is sort of like, seems to be sort of going mad. I absolutely love this installment of it. I ended up giving it five stars and would 100% recommend this series to anyone who likes horror. Next we have Rainbow in the Dark by Sean McGinty. This is another uh, young adult uh, young adult novel, which I would say this is a very like literary story. It has very heavy themes in it, though it does almost feel like maybe uh, SFF, but I think ultimately just a mind-bending literary novel. This really took me by surprise. I thought I might like it, but I really loved it. I also ended up giving this book five stars. I am hard pressed to find anything wrong with it. This was excellent. Uh, if you like uh, mind-bending young adult stories, then definitely pick this one up. And last but not least, I completed The Testing. It is the first uh, the first book in, I think it's just called The Testing Trilogy. It's a young adult dystopian series, very similar to like The Hunger Games or the Divergent series, uh, although just not as memorable. I ended up giving it three stars. It was a fun time while I read it, but I am already forgetting what it was about, but still I would say a worthwhile read if you like those types of books. So those are just my quick thoughts and ratings for these books, but if you are interested in learning more about them or why I gave them the ratings that I did, feel free to head over to my Goodreads page. I have handwritten uh, reviews for all of those, so if you're curious, go feel free to go over there and check those out. All right, so I think that is it as far as my February wrap-up goes. Let's just jump right in and draw some books for my April TBR. All right, so first up is a star from my all-purpose this TBR star jar. All right, so I like to try to draw stars that have been in here for a while, and I know that the yellow stars have, I think that they have been in here the longest. So let's go on ahead and draw one of those first today. All right, and my first pick is going to be, oh nice, tell me an ending, I own this one. 
Tell Me an Ending by Joe Harkin. I've had this for a while. I think that this is maybe a um, kind of a soft sci-fi novel. Okay, so this is set in a world where I guess people, there is a technology that will erase people's memory. It says thousands of people are shocked by a notification that they uh, once chose to have a memory removed. That reminds me of Eternal Sunshine. Uh, Internal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is one of my favorite movies. And it says they're be being given the opportunity to get that memory back. So I think that that is an excellent concept for a book. And also this cover, just look at that. Yeah, I had actually forgotten about, like I'd forgotten that synopsis, but that sounds super intriguing to me. So that's great. That is an excellent first pick. So first pick is Tell Me an Ending. All right, next up, I'm going to be drawing a star out of my series Continuation Jar. All right, how about we, let's go for one of the one of the red stars. I think the red stars in here, these have been in here the longest, so let's go for one of those. All right, next up we have, oh, that's awesome, Nixia Uprising. This is the last book in the Nixia Triad, which I also own this. All right, there it is, Nixia Uprising. This is a young adult sci-fi series. Uh, it's set in a world where there is this like incredibly valuable substance called Nixie. It's like this moldable, almost like a liquid metal. People have to go to, I can't remember what the name of the planet is, but they have to go to some other planet in order to mine this substance. And the story follows this group of young people who are sent on this mission to uh, mine this substance. And the species that lives on this planet is sort of friendly, but there's like tentatively friendly and things kind of go a little, go a little sideways. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, it's been, actually been a while since I read the first and second book, but I really have enjoyed the series and am very much looking forward to finally wrapping it up. Also, this is not too long of a book. So, uh, so yeah, that should be a pretty quick and fun little read. So my second selection is going to be Nixia Uprising. All right. And last but not least, we have my gold and star jar. These are my most anticipated reads. These are not necessarily new releases. They're just books that I've really been looking forward to. Uh, so let's see what we pull out today. All right, and it looks like we have, oh nice, Goblin by Josh Mallerman. Also own this one. This is, Josh Mallerman is definitely like become, very quickly becoming one of my favorite modern authors. Uh, and this I think is a, uh, like a short story collection, like a horror short story collection. And I'm pretty sure um, it's called Goblin because all of these short stories are, are set in sort of a small town called Goblin. I'm guessing that since these stories are set, they're all set in this small town, um, I'm guessing it's kind of almost like a haunted small town sort of idea, like like the book It or whatever, like maybe a, a small town that like something has possessed it or like crazy un unexplainable things keep happening there perhaps. Uh, I do really, really like that concept and have lately very much been enjoying short story collections. I haven't read a ton of them still, but have really been getting into them more and more lately. I do love the way that Josh Mallerman writes, so uh, so hopefully this will be a winner for me. So uh, my final pick is going to be Goblin. All right, and last but not least, I'm going to be reading a book for the Buzzword Challenge. The book that I have selected for April is Nothing But The Rain. I'm pretty sure the prompt is Nature Words, uh, and rain, that's a thing that happens in nature, so that's why I picked this also, is Teensy Tinesy. This, I think it is set in a town that uh, it just rains all the time and the rain it's been happening for as long as anyone can remember it never stops and i think it's like the longer it rains like it's washing people's memories away or something like that i think this is kind of literary and has some like very like deep he like heady themes in it it seems to have very very good ratings so i think that it should be a pretty good pick for the buzzword challenge in april all right, so I think that that is going to be it. This is everything that I am going to be reading in the month of April. I would be very curious to know if you have read any of these books and what you thought about them. Also, if you're planning on reading anything particularly interesting that you're excited about, I would love to talk to you about it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will like it and possibly subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.